I have seen what I, what I think are evil spirits who declare themselves to be evil spirits. <laughs> this demonic sounding voice came out of her. She spoke multiple languages. She rose out of her chair. They were trying to hold her down. Otherwise, they said she would have risen to the ceiling. And we all have to be open to considering that there's something more here. And if you just exclude all these people and say, well, they're all psychotic individuals or something, they're never going to get the help they need. I'm Dr. Richard Gallagher. I'm a board-certified psychiatrist. I'm also a professor at New York Medical College in psychiatry and on the faculty at Columbia. About 25 plus years ago, I found myself uh, being asked by clergy of many different faiths to uh, investigate and give them my psychiatric opinion about people that they thought might be demonically attacked. I went into my conversation with this priest a little on the skeptical side. And somewhat to my surprise, he liked that. He said, well, if we didn't think you were skeptical, Dr. Gallagher, we wouldn't have wanted to use you. Well, I guess he had heard about me, and that's, that's why he came to ask my opinion. About a woman who was claiming that she was beat up by invisible forces. She would even have these bruises spontaneously appear. She appeared to me to be completely sane. And I'd never seen a case like that before. It didn't seem to be explainable on the basis of any medical or psychiatric pathology. She and her husband were devout Catholics and they believed it was kind of uh, evil spirits. I didn't have a great deal of interest in getting involved in this. But, you know, as a physician, I really don't like the idea of seeing somebody in tremendous pain or tremendous confusion. I was asked to comment whether there could be any psychiatric illness, whether she was being abused, whether she, this was her imagination, etc. And I had to conclude that there was no medical reason why this would happen. I felt that she was being attacked because in fact, she was a very holy person. I believe in science. I trained at an American medical school. I use scientific, the results of scientific studies every day of my life. I believe in evolution, I believe in the Big Bang, I believe in quantum theory. I just have had a rare window or a rare opportunity to study these things a little more rigorously than most doctors would have. With a possession, you have to have, at least in the Catholic Church, what is called moral certainty. And there are very strict criteria, and it really depends on evidence. The essence of a possession is a person going into a trance and a demonic sounding voice coming out of them. <gasps> Attacking the people, uh, attacking religion, usually using very crude and violent language. Like, leave her alone, she's ours, this type of thing. Superhuman strength. Knowing secrets of people that a human being could never know otherwise. She was a Satanist, a self-professed high priestess of a Satanic cult. The night before I first met her, 
Uh, I was in my bedroom with my wife at about 3 a.m. And we had two cats. And these two cats just went completely berserk in a way that we had never seen before. And we were mystified. And the next day, the priest introduced me to Julia. And the first words out of Julia's mouth were, well, Doc, how did you like those cats last night? Now, I'd never met the woman before. She would often tell me how people's parents had died. For instance, she told me, uh, I know your mother died of ovarian cancer, which was true. And once I was on the telephone line, on a landline in this case, with the other exorcist. Now remember, Julia was not in the phone conversation. This was not a conference call or anything. We actually knew where she was at the time. She was about a thousand miles away. And uh, that same voice came in over the phone line, said the same kind of thing. She's ours, leave her alone. So I said to the priest, I said, did you hear that? And he said to me, yeah, the evil spirit can even interrupt our phone conversation which I found pretty remarkable. It was pretty creepy, but I also found it pretty remarkable. She was um, completely demonically possessed. It just doesn't happen out of the blue. It's not like your average person all of a sudden is gonna wake up and be possessed. There is pretty much always an explanation. They have turned to evil in a very explicit way for instance, in Julia's case, the context was obvious. She had turned to Satanism. These are not fringe beliefs. And then there are countries around the world where uh, Haiti, Madagascar, for instance, Everybody in the country believes in the devil and everybody believes in possessions. And then throughout history, most cultures, certainly most major religions, they've always had a belief. In fact, they have an official belief in evil spirits and the ability of evil spirits occasionally to attack people. Critics often ask for a, a ludicrous level of, quote, proof. You can't do lab experiments. And in my experience, many critics, they've never seen a genuine case. They've never even spoken to an official exorcist. I don't think that's very scientific of them. Many, many people in the mental health field are more open to healthy spirituality than they were in the past. We have, I think, moved past an era heavily influenced by Freud's atheism, where psychiatry was actually hostile to religion and spirituality. I don't want to prevent people who need psychiatric help from getting it. But then there are these rare cases. No amount of medical help is going to deliver them of an evil spirit. There are definite criteria, there's definite evidence. Although the evidence, while massive throughout history, is of an historical nature. If that's not good enough for you, well, you know, you're never really going to be able to understand this field.